everyone, my name is Trebelli. I'm a board certified anesthesiologist assistant and in this video I want to cover what a day in my life is like when I'm administering anesthesia for a neuro case. So this kind of day was different than some of my other days because of the specific requirements for this surgery. So if you're interested in that, keep on watching. And I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe button down below. And if you have any video requests, please let me know by leaving a comment down below. Now let's get into the video. I start my day with my morning routine and make coffee before heading to work. On some days, I try to go to the gym before work, but on this day, I had to be at work earlier than usual. On most days, my first case is at 7.30 a.m. On this day, I had an earlier surgery start at 7 a.m. I clock in about 30 minutes before surgery starts. In those 30 minutes, I get the room ready. I also interview the patient about their medical history and review their anesthesia plan. I get the room ready by getting the monitors I need set up. This includes the EKG monitor that shows the patient's heart rate and rhythm. I also set up the blood pressure and the pulse ox. The pulse ox is super important and overall lets me know that the patient is breathing when it reads closer to 100. During the surgery, I'm constantly reviewing a patient's vital signs through these monitors. These monitors are part of what makes anesthesia safer for patients. Next thing I have to set up is the breathing tube. This case will be operating on the neck. There are many important structures in the neck from blood vessels to nerves and nerves that will control the vocal cords. So for that reason, in this case, I need a special type of breathing tube. This special breathing tube helps monitor the neck muscles during the surgery. The patient's muscles are monitored by a separate person during this operation. This person will be monitoring the patient's muscles. So it's important for me to give a paralytic medicine that will wear off quickly. I will also give a propofol infusion because the gas that we typically give in anesthesia can mess with the readings. To summarize, I'm changing a few things for this case to help with the extra monitoring. I'll give a paralytic that will wear off quickly after I place the breathing tube, and I will also give a propofol infusion in the patient's IV. I also use a glide scope to intubate this patient because I want to be very careful with manipulating the patient's neck. For this case, the patient will receive total intravenous anesthesia also known as TIVA. The patient will receive their anesthesia through their IV. To make sure the patient has enough anesthesia, I use a monitor that measures how much anesthesia the patient has on board. For this case, I drew up Versed, fentanyl, propofol, and succinylcholine to administer at the start of the case. I also have large bottles of propofol for the infusion I'm going to give. Please make sure to like and subscribe to support this channel if you haven't already. During the case, I do my scan of the vital signs and propofol infusion. Here I see the heart rate, the oxygen saturation, the rhythm, and the blood pressure. This monitor shows the patient's ventilation settings, which is controlling the patient's breathing during the surgery. The patient received propofol through their IV to provide general anesthesia for this case. The patient also received fentanyl in their IV, which provided pain relief. After settling into the case, I caught up on the charting. It's important to chart medications as they're given during the case and other important parts of the patient's anesthesia care, such as the breathing tube placement.
If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and comment if you'd like to see more Day in the Life videos. I gave Zofran towards the end of the case. Zofran is an anti-nausea medication. Nausea after anesthesia is one of the most common risks and I do my best to prevent it for patients. At the end of the case, I worked on getting the patient out of general anesthesia and breathing on their own. My second case of the day was similar to my first case. It was another TIVA case. These cases are really interesting because of the extra monitoring and the changes to the anesthesia plan. I've also observed really smooth wake-ups from the TIVA anesthesia, which is really rewarding to be a part of. I am clocking out. It's been such a long day of doing neuro and setting up for my anesthesiologist's birthday. So yeah, I'm pretty tired now. <laughs> Um, neural is very busy. It keeps you busy with the lines and what I was doing, which was um, Tiva. So that kept me pretty busy. It was a good, a few good cases, um, which is nice. And yeah, and the patients turned out really well, so I'm happy about that too. I may see if I'll go to the gym right after work, or if I'll eat a little bit. I'm not sure what. I was off work around 4:30 p.m. After work, I went to the gym with my boyfriend. I've noticed a huge difference in my confidence and happiness when I skip the gym. And so I do my best to go, but my boyfriend also keeps me accountable, which I appreciate so much. This is also part of what I love about anesthesia. I do feel like I get a great work-life balance doing this job. So that concludes what my day was like. If you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.